they ain't got nothing left open for them to get in here. Then the Holy Ghost illuminates something to me. Says, you know what? Those fruit flies appear based upon the atmosphere and the environment that they're in. When the atmosphere and environment is right, those fruit flies will show up. So it is with sin. So it is with sin. Because that those fruit flies are actually living organism, mechanism. And they're dormant until the proper atmosphere and environment. You get fruit that sits around, that's been laying around for a while, and it starts to go bad, those fruit flies appear. So it is with sin. Because with sin that we have, and because we have not mortified the deeds of the flesh, we have sort of put them aside or put them to the rest uh, until, you know, when we ain't, well, I ain't gonna worry about that. I got that set aside. And then when things are not going, and we, and we, we don't go and operate in that manner that we used to operate in that particular sin, we think we are got that thing under control. No, it's not. It's dormant. Dormant. It's dormant waiting around for that atmosphere and that environment to be conducive for it to come forth alive again. That's why the Bible is very clear. Mortify the deeds of the flesh. It don't say lay them down, push them aside, put them up. It says mortify. Kill that thing. Because if that you don't kill, it will come alive again. And so it is with us. We, we, we go back and we start to practice sin again. Well, guess what happens? This is very true anyhow. If you practice sin, guess what you are? You are a sinner. You can't be anything else but a sinner. Anybody who practices in sin is a sinner. Amen. Let's go to Romans, the sixth chapter. You're a sinner. Plain and simple. That's just a word anyhow, y'all. Let's go to Romans, the sixth chapter again. Started that first verse. <sighs> what shall we say? And again, we're in the Amplified Bible. What shall we say to this? Are we to remain in sin in order that God's grace, favor, and mercy may multiply and overflow? Certainly not. How can we who died to sin live in it any longer? Are you ignorant of the fact that, that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by the baptism and the death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, so we too might habitually live and behave in newness of life. For if we become one with him by sharing a death like his, we should also be one with him in sharing his resurrection by a new life for God. We know our old unrenewed self was nailed to the cross with him in order that our body, which is an instrument of sin, might be made ineffective and inactive for evil. That we may no longer be the slaves of sin. For when a man dies, he is loose, delivered from the power of sin among men. Now if we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Because we know that Christ the anointed one being once raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has power over him. For by the death he died, he died to sin in his relation to it once and for all. And the life that he lives, he is living to God in unbroken fellowship with him. Even so, consider yourself dead to sin and your relation to it broken. But alive to God living in unbro unbroken fellowship with him in Christ. Not backsliding, unbroken. Not backsliding, unbroken. Not backsliding, unbroken. Let not sin therefore rule as king in your mortal, short-lived, perishable bodies to make you yield to its cravings and be subject to its lust and evil passion. Do not continue offering or yielding your bodily members and faculties to sin as instruments, tools of wickedness. But offer and yield yourselves to God as though, Lord have mercy, as though you have been raised from the dead to perpetual life. And your bodily members and faculties to God, presenting them as implements of righteousness. For sin shall not any longer exert dominion over you. Since you now are not under law as slaves, but under grace as subjects of God's favor and mercy. What then are we to conclude? Shall we sin because we live not under law, but under God's favor and mercy? Certainly not. Do you not know that if you continue to surrender yourselves to anyone to do his will... You are the slaves of him who you obey, whether that be to sin, which leads to death, or to obedience, which leads to the righteousness, right doing, and right standing with God. Lord have mercy. But thank God, 
Though you were once slaves of sin, you have become obedient with all your heart to the standard of teaching in which you were instructed and to which you were committed. And having been set free from sin, you have become the servants of righteousness, of conformity to divine will and thought, purpose, and action. Lord have mercy. I want to go somewhere else too. God is trying to tell us something, y'all. There's no way that you can continue operating in sin when you're in a relationship with the Lord God. You just can't do it. You just can't do it. Um... Mm. Watch this. First John 1 5 says, and this is the message, the message of promise which we have heard from him and now are rejoice reporting to you. God is light, and there is no darkness in him at all. No, not in any way. So if we say we are partakers together, enjoy fellowship with him, when we live and move and are walking about in darkness. We are both speaking falsely and do not live and practice the truth which the gospel presents. But if we really are living and walking in the light as he himself is in the light, we have true unbroken fellowship again with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses, removes us from our all sin and guilt and keeps us cleansed from sin in all forms and manifestations. Amen. So what is God trying to get us to understand? If we if we realize and we say that we are in that we're in Christ, then we can't continue operating in sin. We can't continue practicing sin. But if you are continuing living and practicing in sin, you are still a sinner. And there's a saying that they say in the church, amen, from down home, you need to go back to the morning bench. Because when you apparently said that you accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, what you, was doing to, what you was doing at that time was giving God lip service. And understand this, God understands and recognizes the lip service of man. Oh, yes, he does. He absolutely understands and recognizes the lip service of man. Yep, 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 yep. God understands and recognizes the lip service of man. Yes, he does. Because in Jesus Christ's day, he spoke to the religious leaders of that time. And he told them, you people, you honor me with your lips, but your heart so far from me. You are proponents and professors of the law. You push the law down upon the people real hard and strong. But understand this, you yourselves ain't even following them. He told his disciples, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. Uh, 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 do what they say, but not what they do. Because what they do don't match up to what they say. Amen. So that's what God is trying to get us to stand. God's love makes us do right, y'all. So we need to know that in this day and time, God is looking for a people. He's looking for a do-right people, man. A do-right a do right man and a do-right woman. A do-right boy and a do-right girl. And why is he looking for that? Because if you don't do right, then, oh my God, well, he's going to do right by you and, and, and whomever that does not do right. The wages of sin is still death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. So therefore, at this time, we're going to ask for those that are outside of the ark of safety, you have yet to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Amen. And all you need to do is go to uh, uh, Romans, the 10th chapter, the 9th and the 10th verse, and it tells you to confess and acknowledge the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe that he is Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord and that God the Father raised him from the dead and you shall be saved. Amen. That's for all plain and simple that you have to do. Now, for those that are outside of the ark of safety, you done messed around there. You done went back into the, into the sin life that God had delivered you from. Amen. You're in a backslidden state. That's all right. God is married. Jesus Christ is married to the backslider. So as, the, as he's married to you, he's trying to reconcile with you. So what you need to do is to come to yourself in the spirit of the prodigal son. And when you do that, you need to confess and repent. Go to 1 John 1 and 9. That will help you out along the way. Because when you confess and repent of your sins, God himself is faithful because he ain't, he ain't changed who he is. We changed who we were with him. Amen. So he's still faithful. He will forgive you of all your sins and unrighteousness and continue to cleanse you because it's a process that it takes to get us to be in his image and likeness. Amen. And that process does not end until he takes us home. So therefore, you need to get back in that right standing relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, once that happens for you and those that are just coming to salvation, then there's something else that needs to be done for you because you need, whether you've been in the Christ a long time or where you're just coming in, you need to learn some things. Amen. You need to learn.
learn how to be uh, 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 in a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. You need to understand what the relationship is and why it's not a religion. You need to know what the Word of God says about about God and, and His Son, Jesus Christ. You need to know how to understand and recognize what the devil does, the tricks of the devil. You cannot understand all that. Oh, yeah, you need to understand and know what it means to have a purpose in God and how to fulfill that purpose. You cannot know this on your own because these thoughts and, and, and these things are taught um, by the Spirit and they're spiritually discerned. So you need to come and be getting yourself into a Bible-believing teaching church where God has placed in the in that body the fivefold ministries that are designed to help you, to help you nurture you, to help you grow, help you mature, to help you to be all that you can be in God, so that you can uh, contribute to the building up of the of the body of Christ, the edification of the body, Amen, of, of believers, and also that you can contribute to the building of God's kingdom. Amen. And eventually God will allow you to go forth after you've exhibited your abilities and gifts within your church. And, and, and the church uses you to the best of your abilities. Amen. By according to the abilities and gifts that God has given you, you should be able to go forth as everybody else that's called into Christ uh, to fulfill the great commission as found in Matthew 28, 19. Amen. Get yourself there at a Bible-leaving teaching church. If you live in the Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, southern New Jersey, and southern Maryland, and uh, the entire state of Delaware, we invite you to come to visit us at Sound the Alarm Ministries, 3101 North Market Street. West 31st Street is the side entrance to the building. Amen. We sh this is the building of the Union American Methodist Episcopal Church under the leadership of the presiding prelate for the 1st and 4th Districts, Bishop Linwood Wright out the 3rd. He gave us, uh, graciously gave us space to utilize there in their headquarters. We share that space on, on Sunday mornings. Um, uh, we share that space on Sundays with uh, New Hope UAMEC, their sat one of satellite churches under the leadership of the pastor, Reverend Gilbert Bruton, and his quarterly conference assigning assistant, Reverend Marilyn Turner. Their services start at 11 a.m. We go right behind them. Amen. Come and join us, and we'll do exactly what God has designed for us to do for you and to get you ready to fulfill the purpose and will of God. Amen. So now, uh, we want to say this, and, and then we're going to move on and let you go. Amen. Um, stay hungry and thirsty. For the word of God, foremost God himself. God's word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Study to show yourselves approved unto God. A workman need not be ashamed, rightly dividing un, uh, the word of truth. God loves you and so do we. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present your faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and ever. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Lord have mercy. Uh, praise God. Minister Arthur L. Weathersby, Sound the Alarm Ministries. One half of that along with my wife, Pastor Evangelist Sherry O. Weathersby. Amen. Joel 2.1 is the scripture for our ministry. And our motto is, we are crying loud and sparing not, which comes from Isaiah 58.1. In parting, we'd like to leave you with this thought. We do the thing in the Lord. God bless you. Bye-bye.